Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. Well, it looks like it's time for another hand tool shootout, and today we're going to look at who is the king of the butt joint. And for those not familiar, a butt joint is a perpendicular joint where you have the long grain of the wood and then a perpendicular piece of wood going into it. The reason that you need to look at types of joinery for this is that glue is not actually going to hold this joint together. It'll all just suck into the end grain here, and you won't actually get any sort of joint. So there's a lot of different tools and techniques for getting a proper butt joint. The most primitive, or I guess the longest running type of joint that's been used is the hand cut mortise and tenon. So I've got two iterations of that, the hand cut mortise and tenon and a machine cut mortise and tenon to look at. Um, there's also been some other cool new technologies come out lately, like the Festool Domino, which is actually a floating tenon joint technically, and the pocket hole joint, or Craig joint as a lot of people call it. Um, we're going to be doing that using the Craig K5. We're also, just for kind of shits and giggles, going to be looking at doing a biscuit joint. Uh, some people use these for cabinetry and things like that, but it's not actually a structural joint. But I'll kind of show you how that breaks down. Um, so we're going to look at all of those. We're going to get started by putting all these joints together. So let's check out first how long these joints take to put together. Then we'll kind of look at the fit and finish and repeatability of these joints. Then we'll look at how strong each of these joints actually stand up to forces. And then at the end, we'll sort of break all of it down to look at the total cost of ownership and the total sort of cost of investment into doing any of these joints on either a hobbyist or a production capability. So thanks for watching today, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, we don't cut these super often, so I'm not like some Frank Klaus that's going to knock these out in three minutes. But I just use the technique I know that's going to give me a reliable and consistent output. Because the one thing that can slow you down is cutting these more than once. So with these I made sure to mark all my edges and then move carefully towards them with the Paul Sellers technique. And then trim up my tenon with chisels to fine tune the fit. Now my camera did stop recording at 20 minutes, but I did have a stopwatch going as a backup. I am by no means a pro with the Domino. I've only been using it for probably about a month. So I'm sure you could trim a few seconds off of this, but the thing's pretty easy to use and pretty self-explanatory. I ended up knocking these out in just over a minute and they fit perfectly. So this is the technique I'm most familiar with, and this is what I usually use. I just use a router to plow a mortise, and then I'll use my dado stack to sneak up on a perfectly snug fit for the tenon. Now I'll come right out and say it, I have no hope for these joints. Biscuits don't actually add any strength to a joint, they're really just designed for alignment, but I wanted to see if they enforced a butt joint at all. I've put together my share of shop furniture and simple household projects with the Craig Jig, and I've seen all kinds of production shops that use them for a lot of different tasks. And I dare you to find a piece of furniture in a furniture showroom that doesn't have some sort of pocket hole joinery. So I really was interested in seeing how these would end up in this shootout. All right, so now that we got these all cleaned up, I'm interested in cleaning up these faces and seeing how the finished surface actually looks. Um, I'm interested in how invisible the joint is, so how tight it is. Now some of that's gonna be dependent on me and how well I cut these joints, but that comes down to kind of the repeatability of the joint. Uh, and then also how many usable faces each joint has. And that really should only affect the Craig jig, but um, we'll check that out and see how that all came together. So let's get these cleaned up.
All right, so after finishing all these up, there's not really much in it as far as finished face, so A side goes. Um, the biscuit joint, the domino, and the Craig jig A side definitely look the best, but that's really just down to like execution. Um, the only real problem with the hand cut and the machine cut joints were the chip out on the edges, but that could easily be solved with scoring. I was just trying to give them the best opportunity possible to compete with the other guys um, by just, you know, going straight to the tools. Um, as far as the B side goes, or the, you know, the non-outside finish side, um, again, the domino and the uh, biscuit joint look almost perfect. Um, the Craig jig looks great besides these uh, plugs, but with some of the new Craig plug cutters, you could fix that pretty easily. And the B side of the machine cut joint looks exactly the same as the A side joint, um, and that comes down to machine accuracy. But you can see in the hand cut joint here how there's just a little bit of inaccuracy because it's done by hand. So maybe on that shoulder I didn't go down exactly at 90 degrees or I wasn't exactly in the same plane as the other side of the joint. Again, that comes down to skill, time, and execution. So uh, with a little bit more time, you could definitely account for that. But that's one kind of consideration. Um, one thing I didn't think about when I was going into this is the fact that obviously a hand cut tenon is gonna complicate your measurements as well. Um, so that comes into kind of repeatability. So I need to account for the length of the tenon that I plan to cut with the length of the stock that I'm prepping for those stretchers or whatever I'm connecting with mortise and tenons. Um, so that's another thing to th consider, and when I'm looking at the strength of these joints, that's something I'm definitely going to have to take into account, since that extra leverage is going to give uh, more leverage to actually break that joint. So now that we've seen the uh, fit sides, I probably would say the Domino is uh, the highest quality look on the finish. Um, close by the biscuit, um, which I guess wasn't really expected, but I guess not really that much of a surprise. Um, and then everything else is kind of in the same league with one usable face. And then, you know, just some complexities with the hand cut and machine cut joints. So now that we've looked at all these, as far as finish quality, um, let's take them to my little rig and check out and see how strong they actually are. So the two cut mortise and tenons were a little bit surprising. I think this had more to do with the weakness of the wood. This was an old growth Douglas fir, which is more of a soft wood than a hardwood. And it was really splintery to work with, so it probably was just splintering away and just cracking. It was the failing of the wood more than the failing of the joint. These tests were hardly scientific because I didn't repeat them multiple times, but I did make sure to be consistent. I put a nail six inches down the board and applied the pressure directly next to that nail so that I could get a consistent measurement with that mechanical advantage of the lever against the joint. So the first joint failed at 118 pounds. That was the hand cut joint. So now we'll move on to the machine cut joint. Again, this is perfectly snug fit and no reason to suspect it to fail. So applying pressure, this one took 170 pounds to break the glue joint. And this didn't splinter the same way that the hand cut one. So again, it leads me to believe this is more to do with the wood than the actual joinery. So I may need to repeat this test again. I mean, it's already failed now, but I guess for catastrophic failure, we'll check it out again. Okay, let's see when this one fails. This is the biscuit joint. And it's totally failed. As you can see, I mean, it's just basically a butt joint. So all the glue is sucked into the end grain here. The biscuit joint actually failed when I put the nail in, so I didn't even have to put any pressure on it. But 38 pounds is pretty weak. I wouldn't suspect the biscuit joint to actually have that much strength. The next joint was the domino joint. And I think the advantage here was that the dominoes are actually hardwood. It was about the same amount of wood, but with the rounded edges and the hardwood floating tenons, it's not surprising that it was a little bit stronger than a softwood tenon into a softwood mortise. The final joint was the pocket hole joint. Uh, this was done with a Craig jig. Uh, it took about 120 pounds to break this joint, which sounds kind of weak, so it was 118 earlier, but honestly, if you have four of these holding up a chair, it should be strong enough for most people to sit in. That's a 480 pound total load. All right, so let's break this down. Uh, I'm gonna have a table here on the screen somewhere. Uh, so pause it if you really wanna break down into any of the details, but I'm gonna go over some of the highlights here. So one of the big things I did with this chart is I looked at 
single unit costs are sort of like hobbyist cost, and this is making eight joints versus production costs, and that was making 100 joints. Um, and one thing that really stands out is look at the Domino and the Craig jig on that. Um, the unit cost when you're doing one unit uh, doesn't go up that much, but when you scale it up to 100 units, it still stays relatively close to the initial investment you have in the tool. Um, what that means is that producing 100, 1,000, 10,000 units, it's really not going to cost you that much labor, and that's what re really hurts you. So what I did is I took how much time it took to make one joint, and then I multiplied that by eight, and then by or then by 100, and uh, I took that and divided how many hours that was, and multiplied that by $15 an hour for just like a minimum wage type employee running in a shop. Uh, and that really can kind of show you your ROI or your break-even point. So that's really if you're trying to use these more professionally than just like as a hobbyist. If you're a hobbyist, um, the one thing that kind of might stand out to you is look at the hand-cut mortise and tenon joint. So making one of those, really you're just in it for the price of the tools and a little bit of time. Um, but when you start making 50, 100 of those joints, the cost can really start adding up, which is the time that you're going to invest in making those projects. So if you just enjoy making something every now and again, maybe just having a saw, a chisel, and a square might be good enough to get you started. You can also look at the machine cut joints and see how those kind of scale similarly, but at a, at a little bit faster, a little bit slower rate. Um, so if you are just, you know, going to be an Etsy producer or making a couple projects here or there, maybe that might work out for you. Um, I have all of the affiliate links for kind of some of the recommended tools for each of those categories down below in the description. So do check that out if you plan on buying any of this stuff. It can help me out just a little bit. Um, it, it, I learned a lot really doing this shootout and really doing all these shootouts. So if you enjoyed this shootout, please drop me a like down below and uh, check out in the cards at the end. I've got a playlist with the rest of the shootouts I've done just to kind of see what else I've looked at. Also, if you're a subscriber or if you just like cool shirts, um, you can see the shirt I'm wearing throughout this video. Um, this is the new Woodwork Life t-shirt. On the front, it's got keep your tools sharp and keep your mind sharper. Or as my wife says, keep your plane sharp and keep your brain sharper. Uh, I guess it works either way. Um, it's got this on the front and then on the back, it's got the Woodwork Life logo. Um, I'm going to be bringing these to WorkbenchCon in February in Atlanta. So if you're there, just uh, shout out to me. Keep your tools sharp, keep your mind sharper. I'll get you a free t-shirt if I have any left. And if you're not going to be at WorkbenchCon, I am going to be putting these on my website for a pre-order. Um, I'm just looking to get 20 bucks out of these. That is shipping included to the continental U.S. Um, I'm having these printed. They're high-quality poly blend t-shirts, uh, screen printed locally here in St. Louis by, by a guy that's doing the work for me. Um, just if you enjoy them or if you think you might want to wear one of these, go check that out. Uh, thanks for watching today. And I guess remember, keep your tools sharp and keep your mind sharper. Have a good one, guys.